welcome back. Uh, we are continue with uh, SPM at Mat Trial Paper Perak 2012. So we are in uh, we are with number 19. Given that y is equal to 3x over x squared plus 1 and its derivative is equal to function hx. So we are going to find out the definite integration of uh, 2hx. So this is what we are trying to find out. We, we are given the equation of y and its derivative. So if we want to find the integration of the derivative, then it becomes the function y again. So this is like, um, you know, this is the function and this is derivative. When you integrate derivative, you get the function again. All right. So this is the definite uh, integration. So this is, uh, we can take out the 2, the coefficient 2 there, and then the integration of, uh, of hx from 2 to 0. So this is basically is equal to 2, and then the function y there, which is 3x over x squared plus 1 from value 2 to 0. So this is equal to 2, square bracket, 3, uh, x now is 2, and then uh, 2 squared plus 1, and we are minusing um, 3 times 0, which is the value of x now, the lower limit of it, then 0 squared plus 1. As we know, um, this side of the equation will become 0. Okay, because the numerator is 0. 3 times 0 is 0, so it's 0. So this is equal to 6 times 2 is uh, 3 times 2 is 6 over 4 squared is 4 plus 1 becomes 5. So the answer to that, uh, so the answer to this question is 12 over 5. There you go. Let's move on to the next question. Number 20, find integration of 2x plus 1 dx from a uh, to minus 14. So let's do that here. Integration of uh, between a to minus 14, 2x plus 1 dx. This is equal to, integration of 2x is equal to 2x and then 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1. Integration of 1 is x. So that is between a and minus 4. So uh, to x squared, and this is 1 plus 1 is 2, so we can cancel out each other, and then it leave with x squared only. x squared plus x between a and minus 4. So this is equal to, uh, let's uh, put the value a and then minus 4 inside. So first of all is a squared plus a minus uh, nested uh, bracket minus 4 squared and then plus minus 4. So this is equal to, uh, let's go and resolve um, uh, on the right over here. Uh, let's maintain a squared plus a over here and this is uh, minus minus 4 squared is 16 positive 16 16 and then minus uh, plus and minus 4 it become minus 4 so the answer to this question is a squared okay, let me just do it properly a squared plus a minus 16 minus 4 is 12 that's the answer let's move on to the next question we have positive integers Okay, this is important, positive integers, consists of 2, 5, and k. So we have three numbers there. The standard division of this set of integers is square root of 6. So the, the question is find the value of k. First of all, let's take a look at the formula for standard deviation, sigma. This is equal to square root of uh, summation of x uh, minus x bar x bar is means mean squared plus n uh, divided by n or oh, another formula that we can use is this square root of summation of 
x squared over n minus x bar squared. So what is x bar? x bar is the mean. This is mean, right? Is 2 plus 5 plus k divided by n, which is 3. Okay, n is equal to 3. This is uh, the sample size. So x bar is equal to 7 plus k over 3. Okay, we need to find the value of k. And we know that, that, uh, that the sigma is equal to square root of 6. So we're going to need to use either one of these uh, formula. Either this one or this one. I think I'm going to pick this one. So let's do it. So square root of summation of x squared. Summation of x squared is equal to uh, 2 squared plus 5 squared. Okay, this one I put it longer. Uh, plus k squared divided by 3. Okay, let me just get this one um, corrected here. So this should be longer. Right? Square root of the whole thing. Minus x bar squared. x bar squared is this. 7 plus k over 3 squared. So there you have it. Uh, this is equal to square root of 6 from here. So because both of side of the equation has square root, so we can actually cancel it, cancel them out. So we cut out all uh, the square root on both sides, left and right. So left with uh, only the contents of that square root. So let's take a look. Square uh, two square is four uh, plus five square is twenty five. So twenty five plus four is twenty nine. Then twenty nine uh, plus k squared over three minus minus okay let's do this uh, 7 plus k squared so that is equal to 49 plus 14k plus k squared over 3 squared is 9 so the, everything is equal to 6 so how do I get 49 plus 14k plus 7k plus k squared let's do this okay so find uh, information 7 plus k squared is actually equal to 7 plus k times 7 plus k. So we need to go and uh, multiply every single number, every single thing over here. And then uh, 7 with 7 and then 7 with k. Of the that, k with 7 and then k with k. So that will result in, so the word 7 and 7 become 49. 7 times 7, 49. And then 7 times k becomes 7k. And then k times 7 becomes 7k as well. And then k and k become k, k squared. So this becomes 49. 7, 7k plus 7k becomes 14k plus k squared. That's how we get this, right? 49, 14k, and k squared. So that's just a side information. Let's get rid of that. And this too. There you go. All right. We have a denominator 3 and denominator 9. So we need to make sure that we, we make a common denominator. So we turn it to become denominator 9 on both sides. So on the left, we need to multiply it with 3. This we need to multiply with 3. Right? So that 3 times 3 becomes 9. And then 29 times 3. 29 times 3 is... Um, if 30 times 3 is 90, so 90 minus 3 is 87. Plus 3k squared, and then minus 49. Okay. You have to imagine this. This has brackets surrounding it. So minus 49, and then minus is plus, become minus 14k. Oops, 14k, and then minus with... Uh, minus with plus k squared become minus k squared. This is equal to 9. Right, we can resolve uh, the numerator and then um, we can as well 
move number 9 over the other side and become multiplied with 9 so let's uh, continue this side we don't have enough space down there 3k squared minus 2 uh, 3k squared minus k squared become 2k squared and then I want to take the 14k Okay, the coefficient of 14k there is only one here 14k minus so that becomes minus 14k and then 87 minus 49 87 minus 49 is if you minus 50 then it becomes uh, 37 so this is 38 plus 38 equal to 6 times 9 uh, that is 54 then uh, let's move 54 over to the left so it becomes minus 54 so 2k squared minus 14k 38 minus 54 okay um, let's use calculator to be safe Thirty-eight minus fifty-four. That is minus sixteen. Equal to zero, and then we divide everything with two, because they are all even numbers. So become k squared minus seven k minus eight equal to zero. So what do we do next? We want to find the value of k, so we need to factorize. So we have k and k over here. So what is the multiplier? Two numbers that multiply together become minus 8. It could be positive 8 with uh, negative 1, or it could also be 4 and 2, or eight, 1 and 8. So, But we have coefficient of k here to be minus 7, so it must be 8 and 1. 8 and 1. But what about the signage? Because this is minus k, minus 7, so this should be minus and this should be plus. Why? Okay, let's go and verify that k minus 8 and then k plus 1 again we need to go multiply each the component of these uh, numbers in the bracket okay this is just verification if you if you feel you need to verify that uh, to minimize mistakes so let's do that so k and k become k squared so that's the same one we get over here and then k uh, multiply with 1 become plus 1 and then minus 8 and k become minus 8k and then minus 8 and 1 become minus 8 so we get this one correct k squared is still the same right k squared over here and then minus 8 is still the same what about this k minus 7k a k minus 8k so that becomes k squared minus 7k minus 8 so that everything is fine everything is correct so this factorization here is, is correct so let's uh, delete everything here and as such from here then we know that k is okay let, let's choose a uh, blue color ink it is either 8 minus k equal to 0 or k plus 1 is equal to 0 so k could be 8 you know k if k is 8 then 8 minus 8 becomes 0 or k could be minus 1 if k is minus 1 then minus 1 plus 1 becomes 0 but remember k should be a positive integer from here so we can cancel out that k minus equal to minus 1 so the uh, absolute absolute answer is going to be k minus 8 positive integer so that's the answer so you, if you have any problem with uh, this solution, you are free to go and repeat this and uh, as many times as you like so that you can understand. Move on to the next question. Given the equation of a curve y to 2x and then bracket 3x minus 2, find the coordinates of the turning point. Right. So if I visualize, let, let's take a look at the possible shape of the curve. It could be looking like this. It could be looking like this and the turning point is the is either minimum point or maximum point it could be here if you have uh, this this is uh, if we have smiley face uh, graph or if we have frowning face sad face 
If you have set phase, then the turning point is here, which is the maximum point. And at the maximum point, the gradient of the tangent is equal to zero. So that means we need to do differentiation and then find uh, the value of x uh, when the differentiation of this function is equal to zero. So let's do that. Y is equal to 2x and then 3x minus 2. So this is uh, y then is equal to 6x squared minus 4x. So dy over dx, this is the differentiation, is equal to 2 times 6, x, 2 minus 1. And then minus, uh, differentiation of minus 4x become minus 4. So this is equal to 12x minus 4. And at turning point, dy dx is equal to 0. Then 12x minus 4 is equal to 0. Then 12x is equal to 4. Then x, uh, wh why do we get 4? Because we just move minus 4 over here, become minus, uh, positive 4. And then uh, 12x, let's divide that just clear that for a while just divide everything with 12 then x is equal to 4 over 12 or equal to 1 over 3 ok that's the value of x what about the value of y let's create some space here so when x is equal to 1 over 3 at the turning point, y is equal to from the this uh, equation we substitute uh, the value of x which is one over three into that equation so that we can find the value of y. Then y is equal to two x is now one over three. And then multiply with three. Let's do a square bracket here, shall we? Uh, yeah, it doesn't look, it looks ugly now. Okay, let's do that again. 3 times 1 over 3 minus 2. So that is equal to 2 over 3. And then uh, 3 times 1 over 3, then it becomes 1. 1 minus 2 becomes minus 1. So y is equal to minus 2 over 3. Coordinates at the turning point. Uh, let's uh, divide this into two spaces. Coordinate at turning point. Is equal to 1 over 3 minus 2 over 3. There you go. Alright, let's move on to number 23. Number 23 is permutation problem. N P0 where N is a positive integer. So it, you are, what we are saying is that there are N objects and we need to arrange it in arrange it at 0 at a time. So it's uh, very rarely that we can use uh, 0 there. The formula for permutation is N P R is equal to N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. So let's use that formula and we don't have that much space. Uh, so A, question A, n p0 is equal to n factorial divided by n minus 0 factorial. So this is basically n minus 0 is equal to n, right? So n factorial divided by n factorial, this is equal to 1 then. Whatever number n is, but n is a positive integer, n factorial divided by n factorial, that number divided by itself, so square becomes 1. So that's the answer for question A. Let's take a look at question B. 
Three boys and four girls stand in a row to take a group photo. Calculate the number of ways to arrange them in a row if no condition is, uh, is imposed. So three boys and four girls, a total of seven students. Seven, seven person, right? Then uh, the answer is going to be seven factorial. So what is the value of seven factorial? Let's use calculator. It's, uh, it's seven factorial because there are seven, uh, seven boys and girls all together. So if there is no condition imposed, then it's just seven factorial. So it's uh, use uh, calculator seven and then factorial shift and this one. This is equal to five thousand and forty. So that's the answer. Now, number two, all the boys stand next to each other and all the girls also stand next to each other. Let's take a look at this uh, little Y. So how many boys? Three boys and four girls. Let's say green represents boys, right? And then another boy. Another boy. And then uh, purple. A violet is the uh, represents girl. There are four girls all together. Okay, my hand drawing is not like Picasso. So take let's take a look at how they can be arranged. First, look at the boys. They need to be next to each other. Boys cannot mix with girls. So three boys. How many ways that we can arrange three boys? Yes, it's going to be 3 factorial. What about the girls? There are 4 girls all together. The number of ways to arrange them is going to be 4 factorial. Then what we do? Um, we can multiply them together. 3 factorial times 4 factorial. So we can get uh, the total number of ways. But wait! These two groups of girls and boys can also switch sides. Now we have boys on the left and girls on the right. But what if the girls are on the left and boys on the right? So we need to multiply that with 2 then. So this is the total number of ways that they can be arranged. So that is going to be 3 factorial times 4 factorial times 2. So this is equal to, let's see our calculator. 3 factorial times 4 factorial times 2. So the answer is 288. There you go. Move on to the next question. Number 24 is the question on probability. The probability that Encik Zakon and Encik Farid come early to work are 2 over 5 and 1 over 3 respectively. Find the probability that a. Encik Zakwan comes early but Encik Farid comes late. Alright, let's um, organize the information for a while before we answer, before we attempt to answer the question. Probability that Zakwan comes early. This is equal to 2 over 5. And then probability that Farid comes early. This is equal to one over three. Let's uh, just give a name to this uh, probability. Let's uh, say I call it call this is as P A, shall we? And this I call it as P. No, no, no. Let Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Hmm. Let's give a more meaningful representation here. Let's say Zakwan is Z, early is E. So Z E. Okay, then this is Farid comes early, then F E. Probability that Farid comes early. And then next one is what is probability that Zakwan comes late? Uh, 
this is equal to 1 minus 2 over 5, which is 3 over 5. So we represent that with C far at F L late. The last one is C probability that Farid comes late. This is equal to 1 minus 1 over 3, which is 2 over 3. And that is represented by probability that Farid, uh, that, okay, Farid comes late. Okay, I need to do a correction there. This is not F. If that should be uh, that. There you go. Okay, we got that corrected. So now, question A that says, what is the probability that Encik Zakwan comes early but Encik Farid comes late? That, okay, we need these two. We need, uh, we need this. Zakwan comes early and then Farid comes late. We need that. So we need to have P Z E Whoa. P Z E times P F L there you go that is equal to uh, probability that Farid comes early uh, Zakwan comes early is 2 over 5 times probability of Farid comes late which is 2 over 3 this is equal to 4 over 15 that's the answer. And then B. At least one of them comes early. Hmm. Okay. At least one of them comes early. If either Zakwan comes early, or Farid comes early, or both of them come early. Okay then. And the way to answer this is then, uh, let's uh, take a situation that both of them comes early first. Then the answer is going to be, P Z E times P oh well that um Zakwan and then Farid right Farid is F E okay and then plus okay this is the situation when both of them comes early both come early Right, and then uh, let's see the um, probability that Zakwan comes early but Farid comes late. So that is uh, Zakwan comes early times probability that Farid comes late. Okay, now this represents Zakwan early. But far it late. All right, and the last uh, situation, probable situation, is gonna be like that one is late, but far it is early. So the probability of that one being late times probability that uh, far it is early. And yeah, let's put a note. Zakwan late but far it early. Okay, let's fish down a little bit. Okay, probability that Zakwan come early is 2 over 5. Time probability that far it comes early, which is 1 over 3. Plus Probability that Zakwan comes early, which is 2 over 5, times probability that Farid comes late, which is 2 over 3, plus probability that Zakwan is late, which is uh, 3 over 5, times probability that Farid comes early, which is 1 over 3. So this is equal to uh, 2 over 15 plus 4 over 15 plus 3 over 15. So this is equal to 2 plus 4 plus 3 which is 9 over 15.
9 over 15 is equal to if both of them is both numerator and uh, denominator is divided by 3 then becomes 3 over 5 alright that's the answer let's move on to the last question number 25 number 25 is a question on probability distribution the random variable x of a binomial distribution with 5 trials has a mean of 3 so we are talking about Bernoulli's trial over here we have five trials so that um, p uh, no, uh, n is equal to five and we know that the mean given from the equation is equal to three and we know that the formula for mean is equal to n p p is the probability of success probability that is the value we're trying to find out here so we just what what we need to do is utilize this uh, formula to find the value of p because n is known to become five and mean is three. Then to answer the question a, n p is equal to mean. Then n is five. P is not known yet equal to three. So p is equal to three over five. So this is the probability of success. Okay. Question B, the probability that two out of five are successful. So what it what it says is that we do five trial, that two out of that five trial are successful, and then three out of the five trial are failed. The formula for probability is P X equal to r. r is the number of times that is successful which is 2 uh, in this uh, example equal to n c r n is the number of trial which is uh, in this example uh, 5 times uh, probability that it is successful uh, to the raised to the power of r number of times it is successful and then times with q the number of failed attempts, failed trial, uh, raised to the power of n minus r. So let's use that formula. So for this case, we uh, want to find out if r is equal to 2. Okay. Now r is 2, n is 5, p is equal to 2 over 3, uh, 3 over 5, sorry. That is the answer that we get in the previous question, question A, then Q is going to be 2 over 5, that is probability that fail, which is 1 minus 3 over 5, which is 2 over 5. So let's go plug in this number. So F, uh, well, 5 C2, and then multiply with uh, 3 over 5, raised to the power of 2, which is R, right? And then, um, Q, the number of times the trial fail, which is uh, 2 over 5, raised to the power of n minus r, 5 minus 2. This is equal to 5c2. Now let's uh, find out from using our calculator. 5c2. That's 10 times with 3 over 5 squared, which is 9 over 25, and times 5 minus 2 is 3. So let's just put the value there is equal to 3. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, over 5 cubed, which is 125. Let's fish down a little bit. Uh, let's use our calculator. So 10 times um, 9 over 25 and then times 8 over 125. So that is our answer.
144 over 635. Six hundred and twenty-five. That is the answer. Okay, our video today is slightly more than half an hour. Uh, well, I do not plan to break it into two uh, because as it reached thirty minutes just now, we had only one or two questions left, so I decided to just continue on. I will create another video for paper two, so just stay tuned. Uh, let's go and learn together. Okay, bye bye. See you again.